Hello, this is Jockin, coach of the San Francisco Cinderace. I thought I would do a uh, team builder for my week one match against the Toronto Toxic Crooks. Uh, here we've got the lineups for both of the teams, all 10 of our Pokemon, what we could bring, what's going to stay on the bench. Uh, this week I decided I was going to bring my Grimmsnarl, Aegislash, Cinderace, Flygon, Silvalli, Vaporeon, just straight down the list in order. I thought those are my six best options this week. Uh, my opponent, the Toronto Toxic Rogues, has G-Max Sandaconda, Halucha, Duraldon, Frozmoth, Obstagoon, Rabombi, Dottler, Gorgeist, Mudstale, and Scrapty. So right off the bat, when I was looking over this team builder, I noticed uh, an abundance of bug types. He's got three bug types, and Gorgeist, Grass type as well. So it's a very good matchup for Cinderace to be there. Uh, as well as uh, the Silvalli I decided to bring this week is going to be a Flying Silvalli. So they both have good matchups there. Flying Silvalli especially, it hits, uh, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six things super effectively. Uh, and dodges G-Max Sandaconda's Earthquake, but I'll get into that later. Uh, I think it's a solid team, and it, what I'm expecting him to bring, I'm expecting to see uh, Sandaconda, Halucha, Duraldon, Obstagoon, Rabombi, and either Gorgeist or Scrafty, I think is going to be a good option for him to bring as his last slot. But uh, let's get into the sets I decided to bring this week. So up first, my Aegislash. Uh, it's a mixed offensive Aegislash. Uh, it's got Metal Coat. Uh, the Metal Coat is there because a Metal Coat Flash Cannon has, I think it's somewhere around 50% chance to one hit knock out the Halucha. And that's this thing's main job is deal with Halucha because Halucha wants to get up a Swords Dance and get off a close combat to use its wide herb, get Unburdened going and try and sweep. Uh, Aegislash is immune to the close combat even after uh, the plus two from Sword Stance, it only takes 80% from a Fire Punch. So it deals with it very well. It's a good check that I can bring it in, dodge the close combat, or even take the Fire Punch if need be. King Shield, drop its attack, and then get off a Flash Cannon, Shadow Sneak. I think it's going to be very good not only here, but against uh, some of the other members. It checks Rabombi very well. Then it can switch into Rabombi and do a lot of damage as well. Uh, about the only things that worry it, maybe Sandaconda and Obstagoon, but... The Sacred Sword is there for Obstagoon. If I think he's going to switch it in, it will one-shot the Obstagoon, even with just the four attack investment. The four times weakness is big enough that it will one-shot. And if you look at the rest of his team, it's still an okay matchup. It deals well with Frozmoth. Duraldon, the Sacred Sword, would do a good chunk, but it's not the my intended matchup is against Duraldon. does a lot to Rabombi. Doppler doesn't worry it too bad. Gorgeist, it has Shadow Sneak to do some damage, but... It's probably not even going to fight the Gorgeist, honestly, this week. It doesn't have a great set to do it, so I think it's going to be a very solid option. Maybe Scrafty scares it a little bit, but I think Obstagoon is going to be his main check. Next up, we have my Cinderace with Heavy Duty Boots, uh, 252 Attack, 252 Speed with a Jolly Nature. Uh, this lets him be as fast as possible, so he can outspeed Halucha just barely. Uh, a Pyro Ball should do enough to one-hit kill him, and if it doesn't, then Aegislash comes in with a Shadow Sneak and finishes him off. So that's one thing, but like I stated earlier, there's three bug types of Gorgeist that all get hit by uh, Cinderace's Pyro Ball for super effective damage. On top of that, it hits the Scrafty, Obstagoon, and Duraldon super effectively with a high jump kick. And it's got U-Turn if I need to pivot out, but most importantly, he has Court Change. Cinderace is my only removal, so I have to bring Court Change if I think they're going to use Hazards. He has Sandaconda and Mudsdale that are likely to set up Stealth Rocks. Uh, he also has Dottler, Rabombi, which are able to set up Sticky Webs. So it's something I had to be ready for, and the Heavy Duty Boots I have on their help. He won't take Stealth Rocks, he won't get the Speed Drop if he switches in on any of the Hazards, and he's able to swap it to the opponent's side. So I think Cinderace is going to be very problematic for the other team to deal with, just because he kind of has the freedom to click Pyro Ball until the Sandaconda shows up, and then he can just U-turn out, because unless the it's max speed Sandaconda Choice Scarf, I don't think it outspeeds it, and it might not even then. So I think Cinderace is very solid, and he's going to do a lot of work for me this week. Next, we have my G-Max, Grim Snarl. Now, I was debating on this move slot, uh, Reflect or Light Screen. I mean, the matchup I'm worried about is Duraldon, and he's likely to run special, so Light Screen made sense. But looking at the remaining other things I think him to bring, uh, the Sandaconda, the Halucha, the Obstagoon, even the Scrafty, they're all physical threats. So I felt that Reflect was a little more useful. Uh, but we're going to run a special uh, Grim Snarl this week 
252 HP, 165 special attack, 92 speed. Now the 92 speed is kind of weird, but there's a reason for it. If I put 92 speed investment, I am able to outspeed the Sandaconda by exactly one point if he doesn't have any speed investment. If he's just normal Sandaconda with, say, max attack, max HP, I should be faster than him by one point. So that'll let me get up my Reflect and my Nasty Plot and then G-Max or G-Max and Max Guard and then kill him, that sort of thing. So Grimmsnarl's not a bad switch in on Sandaconda because even if it brings the Iron Head, the Babiri Berry, uh, makes super effective steel moves deal half damage. So either for that or for the Duraldon, he can take half damage. And if he gets a Nasty Plot off once he G-Maxes, I think he just picks up three kills. That's going to be all it is, is that... There's not a lot on the team that wants to take both a Dark Pulse and a Dazzling Glee, maybe Rabombi, but other than that, there's not a lot that likes those two stab combinations, so I think he's going to be very strong. Next, Silvalli. I had a couple options. I was looking into fighting Silvalli because I felt it was an okay check to Duraldon. It could kind of check Frozmoth, and it would be a very good answer to Obstagoon. But he has a lot of good things that uh, deal with fighting types. That was one of the reasons I didn't end up bringing Phalanx this week. He's got Dottler, Rabombi, Halucha even deals with fighting types. Gorgeist is immune to it. So there wasn't much reason to make it a fighting Silvalli. And I felt that flying was a lot better. He'll hit Frozmoth, he'll hit the Halucha, he'll hit the Rabombi, the Dottler, the Gorgeist, the Scrafty. He hits a lot of things with multi-attack. Uh, and then on top of that, I gave him Iron Head, Dragon Claw. So Iron Head is there to hit the Frozmoth super effectively if I need to. Dragon Claw for neutral damage against the Duraldon, or good coverage if I think it does more damage against something. But honestly, that that uh, flying type multi attack that's going to be doing a lot of damage this week because there's not many things that like it. The only thing probably being the Duraldon that wants to switch in, and because he's a flying type, he's kind of my emergency Sandaconda answer. If somehow Flygon and Vaporeon go down and I need to get in. He's not bad, assuming he doesn't get stone edged, but that's a worst case scenario. Next, Flygon. So I'm running Flygon, uh, 252 attack, 252 speed jolly, with a life orb. Now we're trying to get a sweep here. I think if I bring the Flygon in on Sandaconda, his main coverage moves would be Stone Edge, Iron Head, Fire Fang, Poison Fang. And I resist all of those, as well as being immune to his main move, Earthquake. So. I'm planning on bringing in Flygon on the Sandaconda, get a Dragon Dance off, and then my three coverage moves, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, Fire Punch, I can hit everything at least neutrally with one of those moves. So if I get a Dragon Dance off or Bombi dies to a Fire Punch, I do a lot to Dottler, I can kill the Gorgeist, the Earthquake's gonna kill the Duraldon in one hit, it lets me outspeed Halucha even. So Flygon's very strong after a Dragon Dance. And I think he, he basically gets it for free. I don't anticipate him switching out the Sandaconda, so he'll probably try and hit me with some sort of coverage move because I can't do a lot of damage until I get the Dragon Dance off. Now, my biggest worry is going to have to be what set he brings. If he brings a Glare or Coil set, that can be somewhat frustrating to deal with because a Glare is really going to hinder this. The Paralysis will be annoying, and I debated on Lumberry. I might make a switch because I still have a little bit before I'm supposed to play later in the day. But... Uh, either Glare or Coil does present a little bit of a problem, and it kind of comes into my next Pokemon here, Vaporeon. Uh, Vaporeon with Leftovers, it's a bulky set, 248 HP, 224 Defense, 36 Special Defense. This lets it take hits either direction, physical or special. It's just a good wall all around. It's got Water Absorb as its ability. Hydration didn't make sense because I'm not going to set up the rain, and even though he doesn't have a water type of his own, there's just maybe he puts water coverage on something, you never know. Uh, the bold nature is there just to help like beef up my defenses without holding back my special attack or my speed or yeah my special attack or my speed um, zero attack so I don't take foul play damage unnecessarily in the off chance he's running foul play on something like obstagoon and then we're running sort of a classic set scald ice beam for good coverage that lets me hit lots of things scald does a bunch of damage to sandaconda vaporeon's a really good sandaconda switch in because it doesn't get anything that threatens me uh, and the scald or the ice beam does a lot i might get the burn with the scald that sort of deal if it's a coil set i have haze that gets rid of any stat changes that can be useful against uh the halucha and the frozmoth too although probably not gonna work against frozmoth because of giga drain but you never know 
and wish if I need to switch out I've got a lot of u-turns and things like that that I could bring in take a wish and then parting shot back out to heal it back up so Vaporeon is kind of my defensive member of the team I guess Aegislash too but Vaporeon's more sort of the dedicated defensive member on this team that's going to be my switch in on Sandaconda it's probably going to be my switch in on Obstagoon most likely that it can deal with them fairly well so I think it's going to be a very interesting match that Obstagoon's probably my biggest worry because it checks a lot of the things it checks my Aegislash it deals okay with Grimmsnarl it can kind of stop the Flygon but I have ways around it the Aegislash the Sacred Sword and the high jump kick on the Cinderace so I, I think I should be able to get the win, but I don't anticipate this to be a stomp by any means. It's most likely going to be a 2-0 or a 3-0, I'm guessing, because my opponent has a very good team that covers for the weaknesses pretty well, and I think he can play it very uh, carefully. Then he should be able to come away with the victory, but hopefully we're, we're going to be okay and pivot around, do what the team needs to do, play the offensive sort of style I've drafted here, and I think I, I can get a 2-0 or a 3-0, like I said, so... Uh, stick around, I'll have the match posted shortly after this video, uh, and hopefully we get the win. Thank you for watching.